Hello everybody, welcome to ChinFat. This is a series on Premiere Pro and showing you how to use the software Premiere Pro uh, and this is specifically Premiere Pro 2020. Last episode we covered the splash screen. This episode we're going to be going over preferences and there's a couple places you can set those up. Uh, first of all you have a you have project settings. So I should say we're going over project settings and preferences in this episode. I'm going to go to file and go to project settings and click on uh, general here at the top. This we already covered in the previous episode. We went over the general tab, the scratch disk, and the ingest settings. So if you have questions on that, you can go back to the previous episode and look at uh, and look at the project settings. Uh, this comes up on the spl splash screen when you start a new when you start a new project. So when you start a new project, it will bring up these options right here, and you can uh, go through these items and change them. And I did cover this on the previous episode. This one we are going to specifically go through uh, preferences. That is found under edit. If you're on a Mac, you're going to go to the Premiere Pro. You're going to go to the Premiere Pro, which is going to be the left. It's just going to be up here next to these items here. You'll click on Premiere Pro and go to Preferences. That's standard for Macintosh. If you're on a PC, you go to Edit, and there you will find your Preferences. And go to Preferences, and we can click on the first one and go to General. This window will pop up. There are a ton of preferences inside of Premiere Pro. I'm not going to cover all of them. I'm just going to cover some of the more important ones. So the first tab here, you got all these tabs you can click on that has several different preferences under each one of these tabs here. Uh, so we're going to start with general here. If you open up a project that is from a really early project, maybe a, a few years ago, uh, your double click has been changed. It used to be that you had to option click or alt click. Uh, op now option is what you use on a Mac, alt is what you use on a PC, uh, basically the same key on on either operating system. It used to be you had to hold down alt while you double click on a folder to open it up in a new tab. Otherwise it opened up that folder in a fleet in a free floating window. Um, so now they have finally changed this to where you, if you just double click it opens up in a new tab and that's nice. So I just leave it at that. I like that new preference. I've gotten used to it and I leave it as such. But if you're used to the old way you can go in here under general and change that. Moving on down to appearance here. This is kind of nice. If you're trying to change uh, the, the look of your uh, software here, you can go from trying to change some just visual settings of your uh, of your software here. You can grab the brightness. You can change this to a lighter all the way to a darker, depending on uh, what you're working on. Uh, sometimes if you're sending this across a projector or something like that or to a TV, you might need to change it lighter or darker depending on the, on the monitor that you're using and what your preference is. Then down below that, you've got the highlight color for doing text here. You can change it lighter or darker. Uh, once again, depending on your on your preference. Uh, moving on down to audio. One of the things I like to make sure is selected inside of audio here is the play audio while scrubbing here. So with that unchecked here, if we grab a file and we scrub, this is called scrubbing here. If we grab the playhead and we move it back and forth, this is scrubbing. You can play this back you can hit hit the space bar to play. But right now I'm just scrubbing through this really quick. And, uh, and right now you'll notice there is no audio playing. If I go up to uh, edit preferences and go to audio and we're going to check mark uh, play audio while scrubbing. Now when we grab this and scrub through it. You can hear the audio uh, kind of updating and playing back kind of quickly. So if you want to hear that audio while you're grabbing your playhead and scrubbing through clips, you want to keep this uh, play audio while scrubbing uh, checkmarked. Audio hardware. If you have a device set up to your computer, if it's just aside from your regular speakers, if you have uh, some sort of interface like an audio interface hooked up to do surround sound, this is where you tell Premiere to choose that. You'll go under audio hardware because uh, Premiere Pro just doesn't automatically use the same thing as your head so head headphones or Bluetooth headphones or something else. It'll it will sometimes default to other speakers. Uh, you can click on those this default output here, and you can change that the default output. And then if you're using the microphone as well, you can do your default input here under audio hardware. Auto save very important. Because uh, occasionally Premiere Pro will crash, uh, and believe it or not. So under autosave, you're going to do uh, Premiere Pro will automatically save uh, copies of your project uh, every now and then. And it depends on how, what you have this set up as. Right here, you can tell how often to save. 15 minutes for me is a lot of work. I kind of don't like doing it. Re if you crash and you have to do redo 15 minutes of really hard work, uh, sometimes that can get really annoying. So I usually set this to about three minutes. Three minutes. So it will save a new project every three minutes. And I will also change my maximum ver uh, project versions to about 100. So it will save up to 100 uh, project files uh, in your autosave folder. It doesn't take very much room, so it doesn't hurt to just pump that up and keep a bunch of different versions available. 
Now, where does it save those files at? That was in our project settings. We went through this the last in the previous uh, episode. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to go to File, go to Project set Settings, and we're going to go to Scratch Disks. Scratch Disk shows where it saves those project files. This is saving in, uh, in the same folder as my project. I can go to that project folder. And here it is. It has created an uh, it has created an Adobe Premiere Pro auto save folder. You open that up, and it's going to have a whole bunch of different project files. Right now, I haven't had this project open very long, so it, it will show your saved your auto save projects. Shows the time and the date that they've been saved, so you can go back in time and open those up. And uh, if you need to restore something that you've uh, accidentally deleted or or destroyed, so let's go back to preferences, and we're going to go to capture. I kind of brought this up in the last episode, but the capture portion is a little bit antiquated. If you've got old tapes that you're capturing, this, these are going to be some uh, capturing uh, options here. And uh, like I said, I'm not going to go over this because this is very outdated. Uh, most cameras you're shooting on now use solid state cards rather than tape. And this is specifically for uh, capturing from a tape. Now this I really haven't gotten into the collaboration with team projects. I have I, I'm going to be doing some team project stuff in the future, and I will have a, a future episode coming coming up on the subject. So right now I'm skipping over collaboration. Uh, control surface. If you have a control surface like a tangent element board, they plug in to control the software. Uh, you can add those in here and make sure that you have your control surface added to the software. Device control. Once again, another ancient uh, antiquated item here. Uh, how to control your device that you're using to capture from your video capture device. From, a, from tape. Uh, graphics. Graphics is just controlling your text engine and tells you how to display your text. So let's skip down to uh, media here. This is some options with uh, graphics and labels here. We're going to be doing a separate episode on labels later on, uh, showing what, co uh, what, what colors you can use to change your clips to and your text to. Uh, we're going to be going over that in a future episode. So I'm going to go into media, the next tab here. Now there are a couple things that I kind of like down here, especially this item right here, is create a, create a folder for imported project because you can have a project window open and you can import another project into this project. When you import those, I kind of like it to organize all those things automatically into a its own folder. So I'm going to check mark that. I like to have this check mark and say import folder, create folder for imported projects. The other item that you need to be aware of inside of media is this right here is this default media scaling. If you have different resolutions of footage, say you got some 1920 by 1080 footage and some 4K footage, uh, this is kind of important here. If you pull this down here, you have two different items, scale to frame size and set to frame size. Uh, as you import the footage, it's going to put a little check mark on these on your footage that you import from here on out. If I check mark this and say OK, uh, now any footage I, I import is going to check mark it as scale to frame size. And if you do it to set to frame size, it'll check mark it as set to frame size. What scale of the frame size does is if you are working with different footage with different timelines, I will have another episode on, on this specifically, but as you import footage into your into a project, if you're using a different uh, timeline, say you're using 4K footage, you're putting it in a 1920 by 1080 timeline, if you drop it in and you have none checkmarked, the footage will be zoomed up and the footage uh, will, will be zoomed up because the resolution is less in your timeline. So it will zoom up on the footage and only show 19... 1920 pixels by 10 1080 pixels rather than the four full K image so it zooms up on it if you do scale the frame size it downscales it to fit your timeline or upscales it if it's 1920 to 4k I will upscale it to fit your your timeline but if you have set frame size what that does is it reinterprets the footage as if it was 4K or 1920 by 1080. What that does is if you have 4K footage and put it in a 1920 by 1080 timeline, it actually decreases the quality of the file. If you zoom up on it, uh, you've lost the quality. It'll treat it like it's a 1920 by 1080 file. Uh, so the best thing to do is usually, I usually have checkmarked scale to frame size in this option under media here. Media cache. This is where it is saving your cache files. And what we mean by cache files is when it is uh, creating waveforms, these are waveforms down here, uh, that waveform information is saved to a, uh, a media cache file that's saved in a database so it doesn't have to reload those every time you open up your project. So you can choose these different locations. If you're working on, uh, if you're grabbing, if you're taking your hard drive and moving from computer to computer, uh, it is probably best to hit browse and save these under your project file or under the hard drive that you're, that you're working on. Otherwise, if you're not changing computers, it'll just up, it'll just download it to the default location, your user's uh, app data uh, location on that computer, and every time you open it up, those cache files will be saved there. So go to memory. You have an option to change how much RAM can be saved for other files. If you have multiple, if you have multiple programs open, you can change that. I just usually leave that at its default there. Uh, playback. 
Playback is useful if you've got a secondary or a third monitor that you're using. If you've got a desktop, if you've got a computer that supports up to two or three monitors and you have those plugged in, you can it, those monitors will show up here. I've got a single monitor right now, so it's just having this Adobe DV, which is, once again, an antiquated uh, item here to play back through a uh, an old DV camera and then to a television set. Uh, but you will have options here that show up that you can check mark for uh, sending your video full screen to a secondary monitor or, or a third monitor. And you can check mark that monitor, hit OK, and the video signal that's playing in your program window will show up full screen to that device. So that's really cool. I use that all the time on my on secondary monitor setups, or if I have a, 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 a two monitor setup, or if I have three monitors, two I use for my extended desktop, and then the third monitor I will use for full full screen video playback. So we move down to timeline. Under timeline, you have some I items up here. The one second, typically you have the 30 frame uh, video transition default, which is about a one second. If you're running 30 frames per second, that's one second. And then audio transition is also one second. You can change this to seconds and just say one second. That way, if you change from 30, 30 frames per second to 24 or to 60, it'll do it'll calculate uh, the time based on your frame rate. So this would be 24 frame uh, dissolve if you're in a 24 frame per second timeline. Or 60, it would be a 60 frame uh, dissolve, so it would always stay one second. I like to change that to seconds and do a one second dissolve by one second uh, um, video dissolve by default. And my default transition is set up as a dissolve right now. Under timeline playback auto scrolling, this is kind of cool as well. If you pull this down and you say no scroll, page scroll, smooth scroll, watch the difference between. I p pretty much never have this on no scroll. Page scroll, what this does is if if we zoom up on a timeline here, and as we play, as the playhead gets to the end of the timeline, look what it does. It updates, it just pulls the next section over here, and it continues playing the next section of your timeline, then the next section, and the next section, and so on. Now if we change that to smooth scroll, watch what happens. As we play through this, as the playhead moves, it actually moves the timeline along with you visually here. So instead of getting to the end and then from jumping back, and this is just a preference thing. It just depends on what you're doing and how you like it. If the playhead gets to the end of the scene, it can jump back. It'll progress to the next uh, graphical section of your timeline and keep playing. Or this here, this option here just plays through, keeps the timeline scrolling as you're playing through it. So just really depending on what you're doing, how you like it. I usually like the page scroll on, uh, but it just depends on what type of project I'm editing. I like the, the smooth scroll on, but it just really depends on what you're doing. And a couple other things I uh, I usually turn off. I don't like, if I render a file in here, uh, I don't like it going back to, the, I don't like it rendering after the previews it has rendered. Uh, I usually uncheck that. And those are just kind of my preferences. I, I kind of like uh, altering those preferences when I first start working in Premiere Pro, and I just kind of leave it that, that way on within the software. So that's an explanation of some of the basics within your preferences there, some things you might want to change, and a quick overview of, of those items. That's it for this episode. If you want to watch all these, if you want to watch more tutorials on Premiere Pro, uh, subscribe to my channel. You can visit my ChinFat channel, and you can go to uh, my to my Premiere Pro 2020 playlist and uh, follow me as I get uh, new updates as they come out. I'll keep uh, going over the software, and we're going to go very detailed and in depth on on uh, using Premiere Pro. So thanks for watching. Bye bye.